Hi, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. Here are 79 common warning signs that autistic burnout is coming soon or that you're in it. Just as a preface, this list came about because someone on Twitter asked me about warning signs to, in reply to my tweet about autistic burnout, and I couldn't stop thinking of answers. A lot of this I personally experienced during my two major and other minor burnouts and some are experiences common to my clients and other autistics I know or read. If several of these resonate with you, you might consider that what you're experiencing may be autistic burnout. Keep in mind, though, that while someone may experience many of them, probably no one will experience all of them. So if some do not apply to you, that doesn't rule out burnout. If you'd like a downloadable checklist with all of these, you can find it at my website, I'll put a link in the description below. It's completely free, you don't even have to enter an email. One last note. Whenever I use the language of comparisons, more, increased, longer, etc., your own personal best functional time in life is meant as the baseline. This is not a comparison to others. This is in comparison to you alone. Now the list in no particular order, low energy, exhaustion, sleep disruptions, lack of sleep or sleeping all the time without feeling rested, getting sick easily, taking longer than usual to recover, decreased motor control or coordination, especially for detailed tasks, dropping or bumping into things more frequently, minor or major injuries or accidents, a feeling that you have to do things, increased black and white thinking, all or nothing thinking, getting frustrated more easily at more things, increased negativity, a sense that the world is going to pot, you become the toxic person that other people start to, to avoid or complain about. And I wanna make a comment on this one. What I don't mean is that you're more direct and irritable than usual. That can damage relationships, but it's not the same thing as toxic. But sometimes when we have no energy left to give and no energy to care about others, and when we don't have other better ways to get our needs met, we can resort to excessive controlling manipulation, hurting, and abuse to try to protect ourselves. Okay, back to the list. Having a track record of accomplishments without feeling good about them. Not being satisfied with all that you have done. You're worried it'll never be enough. A strong drive to keep going even when you don't have energy eventually turning into not caring whether you keep going or not. A strong visceral negative reaction to any suggestion to take it easy, relax, do self-care, or take time off. Decreased access to your emotions. Not remembering whether you ever had access to your emotions. Being certain you never did. It's harder to tell when you're tired, sleepy, hungry, full, etc. It's harder to tell whether you really want to be online, gaming, sleeping, or whether you're doing things out of habit. Having less access to what your body feels in general. Sensory sensitivities get more intense, worse, harder to deal with, more frustrating and it's harder to believe that they will ever get better. Overwhelm is always a breath away. Or nothing feels stimulating enough to be satisfying. Meltdowns or shutdowns are always imminent. Brain fog. Memory issues. Forgetting details of your special interests that you never would have before more frequently forgetting words for common objects, the word is on the tip of your tongue feeling, decreased facial recognition, 
more reliance on escapism, dissociating, video games, overeating, alcohol, drugs, etc. Getting on people's cases about what they do or say, how they act around you. Arguing more with people online or in real life who disagree with you. Less tolerance for people having different opinions. The conviction that if people just did what you said, it would be so much better. Trying harder than ever to control other people. Isolating from other people, often in gradual increments, so you don't notice until people start pointing it out. Being more of a hermit than usual. Answering phone or text messages even less than usual. The more people get on your case to do things, the less you're able to do. The more you try to do things, the more problems there are and the less well they turn out. More and more people suggest that you need help, whether or not you believe them or want it. You've probably tried many things over the years that haven't helped and are more convinced than ever that nothing will ever work. Keeping your living space clean or tidy is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Small tasks feel huge. Every little thing is a gigantic undertaking. Decreased executive function. More reliance on routines. Disruptions cause, cause more stress. More problems at work. Losing work. Trying a job and not managing. Even part-time may be too much. Or not being able to stop working, ever, even when others suggest you should. People are harder. You're more likely to blurt out the wrong thing without thinking. Maybe less likely to care about whether they care. More direct language. You're more likely to give your real opinion bluntly. Loss of ability to speak, sometimes or at all. It gets harder and then impossible to mask. Any existing chronic illnesses get worse, flare up, or have increased pain. Some people make large-scale life changes without any warning to themselves or others. However, this is sometimes a subconscious drive to get away from energy drains before it gets too bad and may be a good thing. A feeling that the world would be better off without you. That you're just a drain on resources. That you're not adding anything good to the world. That it'll never get better. Suicidal thoughts with or without an intention to act. A feeling of hitting a wall. Everything feels harder. Making phone calls is even worse, harder or impossible. Panic attacks. Increased anxiety. Antidepressants having no useful effect. Okay, that's the list. Here are some common mis misdiagnoses to autistic burnout. Bipolar, depression, adrenal fatigue, laziness, selfishness, a worsening of other pre-existing conditions, it's only in your head, PTSD or CPTSD. Some of these may be going on in conjunction with autistic burnout. Some of them may be theories that are masking what's really going on. Nevertheless, it is always worthwhile to check with a doctor to rule out a medical explanation, as the above symptoms can also be a sign that your body is struggling to cope with physical or other mental health challenges. Okay, that's a lot. 
It's 79 in total. Those are the signs that I've come up with that I've seen are common and are predictable. Again, if you'd like a downloadable checklist with all of these, you can find it at my website. I'll put a link in the description below. It's completely free. You don't even have to enter an email. And if these resonated a little too much with you and you'd like some strategies and support getting out of autistic burnout from someone who's been there and done that and has managed to systematize it for the neurodivergent brain, I've put together a course that does exactly that. And you can get more info here. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I hope that this has been useful for you and I wish you a neuro wonderful day.